the future of defense isn't about missiles. It is about a beam of light. Right now, a new guardian is rising in the skies over Israel. You will not hear it fire, you will not see a missile launch, but a threat will simply burn up and vanish into smoke. This is not science fiction. This is real. It is called the Iron Beam. For more than 10 years, the Iron Dome has been the hero of Israel's skies. This system fires missiles to blow up incoming rockets, saving countless lives. It works, but every single time it fires, it costs a small fortune. We are talking tens of thousands of dollars for one missile. The enemy rocket it destroys might cost only a few hundred. So Israel wins the battle, but loses a huge amount of money. This cannot last forever. This is the big problem that Israel needed to solve. How do you protect a country when it costs so much to defend every single attack? The answer was not to build a better missile. The answer was to stop using missiles completely. The idea is a laser, a powerful beam of concentrated light. It moves at 300,000 kilometers per second, the speed of light itself. It does not need to be reloaded. It only needs electricity. And one shot from this laser costs about the same as turning on your home air conditioning for a few minutes. In this video, we are going deep into this new weapon. We will show you how it really works in simple terms. We will explain why it is such a game changer for Israel and for the world. And we will be honest about its big weaknesses. By the end, you will understand why this laser is starting a brand new chapter in the history of warfare. First, let us truly understand the famous Iron Dome. Imagine a huge invisible shield over a city. That is the idea of the Iron Dome. It was first used in 2011 and it changed everything. The system has a powerful radar that is always scanning the sky. When it sees a rocket or mortar shell flying in, it tracks it in a split second. A computer figures out if the rocket is going to hit a populated area. If it is, the system launches a small, smart missile called a Tamir Interceptor from a truck on the ground. That missile flies up and smashes into the enemy rocket in the sky, destroying it safely before it can hit homes or schools. It's an amazing piece of technology. Its success rate is said to be over 90%. During heavy fighting, it has intercepted thousands of rockets. The sound of these interceptions, the loud booms in the sky, has become a strange symbol of safety for the people living there. It means the system is working. But here's the hard truth that comes after every boom. Every single one of those interceptor missiles is incredibly expensive. Experts say each one can cost between $40,000 and $100,000 to make and fire. Now think about who is attacking. Groups like Hamas or Hezbollah often fire simple, unguided rockets. These rockets are crude. They are made in workshops. One might cost only $500 to build, maybe even less. So Israel is spending $100,000 to stop a $500 threat. Do the math. If an enemy fires 100 rockets, it might cost them $50,000. For Israel to stop them all, it could cost $10 million. This is not a fair fight when you look at the money. An enemy does not need to win. They just need to keep firing cheap rockets to make Israel run out of money for defense. This is a dangerous strategy called economic attrition, and it's a real threat to Israel's long-term safety. For years, Israeli defense leaders lay awake at night thinking about this problem. They knew they had the best missile defense in the world, but they also knew it was a financial trap. They needed a new way to defend that did not play by the enemy's rules. They needed something that was so cheap to fire that the enemy's cheap rockets would no longer be a smart weapon. This is where the dream of a laser weapon became urgent. Scientists have talked about using lasers as weapons for over 50 years. In movies, they are amazing. In real life, they were always too weak, too big, or too easily blocked by bad weather. For a long time, it was just a nice idea that didn't work. But technology does not stand still. In the last 10 years, the parts needed to build a powerful laser, like special fiber optics and solid-state lasers, became much better and cheaper. The Israeli defense company Rafael, which also built the Iron Dome, took on the challenge. Their mission was clear. Build a laser that can destroy a rocket in real combat conditions. They called this project Iron Beam. So what exactly is the Iron Beam? Let's break it down simply. 
Think of a super powerful laser pointer, like the ones teachers use, but a million times stronger. The iron beam is a directed energy weapon. Directed energy just means it focuses a huge amount of light energy onto one tiny spot. The system is mounted on a truck or a fixed base. It has three main parts, a very powerful laser, a sophisticated radar to find targets, and a set of super smart mirrors to aim the beam. The power of this laser is measured in kilowatts. The iron beam's laser is said to be between 100 and 150 kilowatts. To understand that power, a normal kitchen microwave is about 1 kilowatt, so this is 100 to 150 times more powerful, all focused into a beam the width of a coin from several miles away. Here's how it works in a fight. The radar detects a threat, let's say a small drone or a rocket flying towards Israel. In less than one second, the information is sent to the iron beam truck. The system swivels to face the threat. Then it doesn't fire a missile. It turns on its laser. A blinding, invisible beam of infrared light shoots out. You can't see it with your naked eye. That beam travels at the speed of light, so it hits the target instantly. It doesn't blow it up with an impact. Instead, it does something more like a welder's torch. It focuses all that incredible heat onto one small spot on the rocket or drone. The metal or composite material of the target can't handle that sudden, intense heat. Within two to four seconds, the spot gets white hot. It melts. It weakens the structure. If it's a rocket with explosives inside, the heat sets off the explosives. If it's a drone, its electronics fry and it falls apart. The target is destroyed not with a bang, but with a silent burn. It turns into pieces of molten metal that fall harmlessly to the ground. This process is completely silent for the people on the ground. There is no loud explosion in the sky. There is no risk of missile fragments falling on houses. It's a clean kill. Now let's talk about the biggest advantage, the cost. This is the whole reason the iron beam was invented. Firing the iron beam for a few seconds uses electricity, a lot of electricity, but still just electricity. Experts who have studied it estimate that one shot from the iron beam, the energy needed to burn through a target, costs about two to five dollars. Let's compare that again. Iron dome missile, up to $100,000. Iron beam shot, about $3. The difference is so huge, it's hard to even imagine. It changes everything. This means for the cost of one Iron Dome Interceptor, the Iron Beam could fire over 30,000 times. An enemy could launch 10,000 cheap rockets, and Israel could destroy every single one of them for less money than it costs to fire 10 Iron Dome missiles. This flips the economic warfare strategy on its head. Suddenly, the enemy's cheap rockets are no longer a smart weapon. They are just a waste of their own money. There are also other big advantages. Speed. The laser beam moves at light speed. There is no travel time. The moment the system is aimed, the target is being heated. This makes it perfect for hitting fast-moving, close-range threats like drones that can zigzag. Endurance. A missile system has a limited number of missiles on its truck. Once you fire them all, you have to go back to base and reload, which takes time. The iron beam does not have this problem. As long as its truck has fuel for its generator or it's plugged into the power grid, it can keep firing. Its magazine is basically infinite. In a long battle, this is a massive advantage. Safety. Because there is no exploding warhead, there is no danger from falling pieces of the interceptor missile. This makes it much safer to use over crowded cities or near friendly troops. But the iron beam is not perfect. It has some very serious weaknesses that stop it from replacing the iron dome right now. The number one enemy of the iron beam is not another weapon. It's the weather. The Earth's atmosphere is filled with tiny particles, water droplets, dust, smoke, or even just humid air. These particles scatter and absorb laser light. On a perfectly clear, dry day, the laser works great. But on a rainy day, a foggy morning, or even a very dusty day, the laser beam loses its power before it reaches the target. It's like trying to shine a flashlight through thick fog. The light gets diffused and weakened. For the iron beam, this means its effective range can drop dramatically in bad weather, or it might not work at all. The iron dome missile doesn't care about rain or fog. It flies right through it. This is a major limitation for the laser. 
The second big weakness is range. The Iron Beam is designed as a point defense system. That means it protects a very specific small area. Its best range is 7 to 10 kilometers, 4 to 6 miles. The Iron Dome, on comparison, can hit threats from much farther away, up to 70 kilometers. So, the Iron Beam cannot protect a whole city by itself. It can only protect a military base, a critical factory, or a small town right on the border. It's the last line of defense, not the first. The third challenge is power. Creating a 150 kilowatt laser requires a huge amount of electrical energy. The system needs a large mobile generator or a strong connection to the power grid. This makes the whole truck bigger, heavier, and a bigger target. It also means if the power is cut, the laser stops working. Finally, the type of threat matters. The iron beam is excellent against what are called soft targets, drones, small rockets, and mortar shells. But what about a bigger, faster, armored missile, or a new type of hypersonic missile? The laser might not have enough power to burn through the thicker, tougher skin of those advanced threats fast enough. For those, you still need a kinetic missile, like the ones in the Iron Dome, or Israel's even bigger systems, David Sling and Arrow. Because of these strengths and weaknesses, Israel's plan is not to choose one system over the other. The plan is to use them together. Think of it like a soccer team with a great goalkeeper and a strong defense line. The Iron Dome is like the main defense line, stopping most of the shots from medium distance. The Iron Beam is the world-class goalkeeper, stopping the shots that get through, right at the last second. This is called a layered defense. Israel is building it now. The top layer for the longest range ballistic missiles is the Aero system. The middle layer for larger rockets and cruise missiles is David Sling. The layer that protects towns and cities from everyday rocket attacks is the Iron Dome. And now, the new final layer for very close, very cheap threats is the Iron Beam. In a real attack, all these systems would work together. The radar would see a big swarm of rockets launched from just a few miles away. The iron beam would immediately start engaging the closest ones, burning them down silently and for almost no cost. Any rocket that is too far for the beam, or that comes in during a rainstorm, would be handled by the iron dome. This teamwork saves the expensive Iron Dome missiles for the threats that only they can handle. It makes the entire defense network smarter, tougher, and much more affordable. The world is watching Israel do this. The United States military is investing billions in its own laser weapons for ships and planes. Countries like the United Kingdom, Germany, and India are all racing to develop similar technology. Why? because the threat is changing. Cheap drones made by companies like DJI are now being used by armies and terrorist groups everywhere. These drones can cost $1,000 but can do millions in damage. Using a million dollar missile to kill a thousand dollar drone is the same bad math problem Israel faced. Everyone now needs a cheap solution. Israel's iron beam is showing the world that the laser solution is finally ready. Tests of the Iron Beam have been very successful. In 2022, the Israel's Ministry of Defense released videos of the system in action. The videos show a silent laser beam, invisible to the camera, hitting a small drone. After a few seconds of holding the beam on it, the drone bursts into flames and crashes. In another test, it destroys a dummy mortar shell in mid-air. The officials were very happy with the results. They said it was a game-changer and a historic breakthrough. The goal is to have the first Iron Beam batteries deployed and ready for real combat by 2025 or 2026. They will likely be placed first in the most dangerous areas, like towns right on the border with Gaza and Lebanon. Soldiers will be trained to use it alongside the Iron Dome operators. This move from science fiction to reality has a deep meaning for Israel's security. For its entire history, Israel has survived by being smarter and more technologically advanced than its enemies. The Iron Beam continues this tradition. It is not just a new weapon, it is a new strategy. It is a statement to every enemy. Your old tactic of flooding us with cheap rockets will not work anymore. We can defend forever, and it will cost you more than it costs us. This changes the psychology of conflict. An enemy leader planning an attack has to think, if their defense is now almost free, what is the point of launching my cheap rockets? I'll just waste them. This kind of thinking can prevent wars from even starting. It is called deterrence. And a deterrence that saves money is a very powerful thing. 
In the bigger picture, the iron beam is more than an Israeli weapon. It is the first sign of a global revolution in warfare. For thousands of years, fighting has been about kinetic energy, hitting something with something else, a rock, a bullet, a missile. The iron beam represents the shift to energy warfare, destroying something with pure, focused energy. The battlefield of the future might be very different. It might be quiet. Instead of the roar of jets and the blast of explosions, there might be the hum of generators and the silent flash of light as drones fall from the sky. Victory will depend less on who has the biggest stockpile of missiles and more on who has the most reliable power supply and the best software to aim their lasers. This is the path Israel is walking now. They aren't giving up on the Iron Dome, which is a proven, life-saving shield. They are giving it a powerful new partner, a partner made of light. So the next time you hear about a conflict in that region, remember this silent revolution happening above the clouds. The defense of a nation is no longer just measured in missiles fired, but in watts of energy delivered. The age of the laser shield has begun.